This is the VK World VK6735, a low-cost phone with some impressive mid-range specs. VK World is a recently formed phone company that has just started making smartphones, and this is one of their releases. It has launched against the much-anticipated Doogie Y100 Pro, which boasts very similar specs but almost 1000 mAh less battery. How does this phone do? Continue watching my review of the VK6735 to find out. 5-inch phones are becoming quite rare these days. The phone is 5 inches, but is actually not very small for a 5-inch phone, mainly because the bezels are quite big. The bezels look almost 2mm on each side and 5mm on the top and bottom, but is still not too long or wide and can be easily used with one hand. It's quite slim though, at 7mm, just about the same thickness as the iPhone 6s. Even though the bezels are large and the phone itself is big enough to be unwieldy. The front of the device is dominated by those bezels. It's the first thing you notice and really makes the phone look less pretty. There are the three capacitive buttons at the bottom as well. The volume and power buttons are located on the sides of the phone and are quite good quality. The back cover is plastic, but VK World has somehow made it feel very close to metal, and honestly it feels very good. It feels like brushed metal, but yet is still very light. The back of the phone holds the camera, the flash, and the VK World logo. Removing the back cover reveals a 3000 mAh battery, the two SIM slots and the micro SD card slots. While I am happy that this is a 5 inch phone, the bezels are quite big and really do detract from the looks of this phone, so it doesn't look as nice. However, it does feel just fine in the hand and the matte plastic is great material, giving you great grip on the phone. The phone is also very light due to plastic being used in most of the phone itself, but it still feels good in hand, mainly because of the metal like plastic back. The VK World has a standard 720p resolution on a 5 inch display, and I would say that the display quality is average, nothing special. The brightness gets up to around 450 nits, which is enough for use in indirect sunlight. Color reproduction is also fairly average. The screen looks nice but doesn't look insanely amazing. While I definitely expected a better quality display from this smartphone, the quality isn't the best but definitely isn't terrible either, so it's more than enough for most people. There is only a single mono speaker at the bottom of this phone, but volume on the loudspeaker is deceptively loud. It is more than loud enough to listen to music even in places like a cafeteria. Quality is average. You could probably hear the surprise in my voice there, and that's because very loud speakers usually have really bad quality, but this one is average which actually makes for quite a good listening experience. All in all, I'm quite pleased with the speaker. With the 3000 mAh battery and the MTK6735 processor, I have high hopes for battery life here. I set the screen brightness to 250 nits and reloaded web pages over Wi-Fi every few seconds. The phone died after 5 hours and 11 minutes. In the video playback test, the screen brightness was 250 nits and a standard definition video was played. The phone playback video for 7 hours and 9 minutes. Again, better than average results. Real life battery usage matches the results above. The phone was off the charger for a total of 12 hours. During that time, Wi-Fi, data, and GPS was always on. I racked up a total of about 3 hours of screen on time, and that included an hour of light gaming, and I had about 30% left when I went to bed. While battery life here isn't stellar, it isn't too bad either. I predict that most people won't have any issues with battery life at all. Medium users won't have to charge until the end of the day, only heavy users will need a charger with them. Android 5.1 is installed completely stock on the VK World VK6735. General use is silky smooth, there is no lag at all when launching or switching between apps. Smart gestures are present in this phone. It basically allows users to draw certain gestures on the phone while it is off to do certain things, like launching apps or waking the device by double tapping on the screen. There is also a very handy double tap the home button to turn off the screen as well. There is no notification LED on this phone. It has multiple languages. Check out and pause the video to see if your language is supported. VK World did not separate the storage into multiple partitions, but kept everything in one huge partition of 12 gigs. That is something I greatly appreciate. 
The MTK6735 is a mid-range processor and had no problems running intensive games on the 720p resolution. I installed and ran Deer Hunter as well as Boom Beach and didn't see any slowdowns at all. I ran N22 as well and got a score of about 20,000, which is a little on the low side even for the MTK6735, but thankfully it doesn't show in day-to-day -day use. The phone supports quad-band GSM, quad-band WCDMA, and quad-band LTE. Reception is not bad, calls and texts were perfectly fine and never dropped, and I had a strong 4G signal all the time, except in the basement where other phones, even the Zenfone 2 and the iPhone 6, had trouble getting signal. I ran speed tests and got 45 megabits down and 5 megabits up, which is not bad at all, but not the fastest. Wi-Fi reception, however, was a little weird. It had better reception than all my other phones, but downloading stuff was quite slow. I'm still investigating this, but it isn't too much of an issue. Bluetooth worked just fine and GPS reception is also quite good. I never lost signal once or jumped around, so no complaints there. In conclusion, connectivity overall is good. Data reception, GPS, and Bluetooth all work okay to well. Wi-Fi is the only section of this phone which is a little wonky, so I'm still investigating that. This section of the video was captured using the VK World VK6735. Let's see how good camera quality is. Camera quality and good lighting conditions is not bad. Pictures are quite clear and the camera snaps photos quickly. However, colors seem a little washed out and even HDR doesn't seem to fix it completely. However, picture detail degrades very quickly the worse the lighting is. The front facing camera is average, good enough for video calls and maybe some selfies. The video quality is also average, as you can see from this part of the video. Overall, this camera does nothing to impress me and in some cases does let me down. It's good enough for Facebook selfies, but it won't be much use in darker environments. So if you want to Instagram your food in a darker restaurant, you can forget about it. So what is the verdict on the VK World VK6735? This phone packs some pretty mid-range specs, but they are very impressive for the price. At just $109, there are very few things to complain about. But just for good measure, let me tell you what they are. This phone is a little big for a 5-inch phone. The bezels are larger than usual. The camera is also unsatisfactory, but other than that, there isn't much else to complain about. Oh, and one more thing, this phone has better battery life than the Doogie Y100 Pro, so if you're thinking of getting that one, maybe consider this one and see if this one works out for you. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. If you want to see more videos like these, hit the subscribe button below and check out any of the other videos that should be popping up right about now.